Hey man, welcome back to uh, A We Back Interviews, man. And we are here with Supreme, a legendary producer. What's up, man? Yo, what's happening, bro? Dude, it's uh, thank you so much for having me on here, bro. It actually means a lot. <laughs> Thanks for being on here, man. Because I like a lot of the production that you do, and I want to hear like the details behind it and how'd you meet Bubblegum and everything like that. So, um, just some of the hey, first bro. things I kind of want to know is like, where are you from, and how old are you? I'm from California, United States, and I'm like 16 years old. I'm about to turn 17 and probably less than maybe three months, maybe like two months or so. Man, that's crazy that all of you guys are like this young, like making hits for real. I know, like, I don't know. It's just like every year, it, it just seems like the like rappers and producers keep getting younger and younger. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, cause if you would have asked me, I didn't think you, and none of you guys were like 16 or anything like that. I at least thought you were like 18, 19. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, like, I don't know, a lot of people um, starting up this year, like, I don't know, you just usually see them around the 15, 16 range. It's kind of it's kind of weird, but cool at the same time. Yeah, it's like a sort of like a new wave of young artists. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, it's just, it's just cool to see, like, the younger, you know, generation of people coming up and, like, making music together. Yeah. I also kind of find it kind of weird, like, when I hear, like, for example, I did, uh, I listened to an Osquin interview, and she was, like, uh, she was listening to X in fourth grade. Like, when I hear stuff like that, that's crazy to me. Because it's just, know, like, like, it's <laughs> odd. It's weird, I guess, because, like, I was listening to X when I was, like, 18 17 so like yeah when somebody said when i was like yeah like um when i was listening to x it was like in eighth grade someone showed it to me on like their chromebook in my last period on a friday yeah and they're like bro you gotta check this guy out and i was like hey oh bro um let me hear it and it was take a step back bro and that just like introduced me to a whole new genre of rap when i heard it i was like dude this is actually fucking crazy like What's the name of this guy? He couldn't tell me the name because he didn't know. So I had to like do some like research on who he was. And I finally found out who he was, started going through his songs. So I was like, bro, this guy actually is really fire. Yeah, I for sure think like the, uh, the SoundCloud era like a couple years ago, it really it's inspired so many younger kids to start making music. And they realized like, wow, I can make music too from my bedroom and put it up on SoundCloud. I mean, SoundCloud isn't relevant as much anymore, but YouTube is a big platform still. But that's yeah, something well, else I kind of wanted to know. Like, what got you into making music? Um, What kind of got me into making music? Probably just out of pure boredom. Like, just um, pretty much, I'd say in, like, ninth grade, I wanted to try making beats, but I didn't know what to use, so I started using my phone to make beats, you feel? Yeah, and I was using like Garage Band. Like most people, when they start off, they have no idea what they're doing. I've noticed a lot of people use Garage Band, which is just a common like app a lot of people use because FL Studio on the iPhone is like I think fifteen dollars. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? But it's like I started making beats on there, right? Mm -hmm. And I realized that like they're not good. They're fucking trash. You feel? And people were been telling me like yo bro this is this is not good like why, why are you doing this you know and it kind of like lowered my confidence a bit to continue so at one point i kind of like stopped making beats and i was like you know what i'm probably gonna stop but then some stuff happened and it's just i'm not gonna go into too too much detail but it's like the gist of it i got moved out of my school and i started doing homeschooling and during that time i didn't really have much to do and I was just in my room most of the time or just like in my house just doing nothing most of the time. So I was like, what can I do to pass the time? I was on my laptop. I was scrolling through YouTube and I see ASAP Rocky ex Playboy Cardi type beat. And it was off the song New Choppa. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to that and I was like, yo, this is actually pretty fire. But like I didn't know how to make beats. So I was trying to learn how to make beats so i scroll all over youtube i was like what do i use to make beats most popular ones were like logic uh fl studio and i think ableton i could be wrong but um 
the one I wanted to use just was FL Studio because it was like more convenient and it's on both F um Windows and Mac. Other like Logic is just only on Mac. So I was like, you know what? I might just use FL Studio. I downloaded it and I had no idea what I was doing. So I had to go on YouTube and search how to make beats. I watched almost every single internet money video and I still was very bad at making beats because it's just like they say how to make beats for beginners, right? But then they over explain the process on how to make beats. So it kind of made it a little frustrating at first. Like, mm -hmm. damn, how do I, how am I going to do this? Like, it just seems so difficult, you know? Yeah. But then eventually I started getting a hang of it. Uh, someone gave me, I think this, the, what's it called? I think the signature bundle of FL Studio, because I was stuck with the trial, but someone gave me the signature bundle. I'm not yeah. going to get into how I got it. But, um, yeah, they gave me that, and I just, like, I was very grateful for that because, like, all my projects, I spent hours, all right, hours just on FL Studio making sure I finished the beat because I couldn't save it. Trial version doesn't let you save anything. So I had to make sure I finished every single beat, and I just keep moving on from there. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Like, we're going to get more into, like, how do you come up with your signature. I feel like you have your own sound right now, so we'll get more into that later on down the interview. But why did you even uh, name yourself Supreme? Like, tell me the uh, meaning behind that. All right. Well, originally, it was called Supreme Beats AP, and I kind of, like, ripped that off of, like, kind of, like, Cash Money AP because yeah. I really <laughs> liked Beats and what he did. <laughs> and... I realized, you know what, I'm probably going to change my name because people are going to start realizing, hey, this guy's trying to copy cash money. or And also not only that, but like, I didn't really understand the whole meaning of AP and apparently meant like, it's like I think assistant producer or something like that. And I was like, all right, what should I just name myself? Because I felt like I, because I'm not really good with choosing names, right? Every time I choose a name, it's always like either dumb or it just doesn't make sense. So I... I was wanting to make sure that this name was like, okay, so it, it doesn't sound that dumb, but it's also, it's, it's like a pretty good name. Like, you know what I mean? Just like a name that you can just say quickly. Cause I know there's other producers that have like very long producer names and it's just like, I don't know. But for me, I just like, what should I just name it? And I just said, you know what? Supreme. And, but like originally the name Supreme, it just came from like, when I was like thinking of the name and I looked at my water bottle and I had like a Supreme sticker on it. I was like, all right, I'm going to name it that. But then like, eventually I started seeing a lot of people with the name Supreme. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a little more creative and add like a dollar sign instead of the yes. Oh yeah. That, that's dope. Then like you actually have a full story of how you came up with your name and it fits well. Yeah. Like it's like you, people try to make beats like yours and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, there's this one guy, I'm not going to get into much about him, Yeah. but he was literally named the exact same thing. He was a smaller producer, though, so I didn't really mind much of it, but he was literally named the exact same name as me, just Prod and then Dollar Sign Supreme. But, like, I, I didn't really pay attention to it much because, well, he's more of a smaller producer. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's more like not that many people would pay attention to his name and compare it to my name or be like, hey... Supreme, you're you're copying this guy. What's up with that? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and and I mean you've made hits and stuff, so it's like no matter what, it wouldn't matter anyway. Yeah, it's like I feel like once you get like a song out that does really well, and it's you have that one name. It doesn't matter how generic it is, right? Yeah. It's like people will know you. It's like, oh yeah, I know who made Guap. It was Supreme, or yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, what was the first artist you started working with? Like, cause you're 16, so I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, like, like it's, I, I thought you were older. It seemed like you're experienced. Nah, nah, trust me. I came in this thing not knowing shit. <laughs> but <laughs> the first artist I started working with, his name, I don't even know if he's still making music. I think he might be, but like, his name is like Lil Yoda. That was, like, the first artist I've ever met. Because, like, how I first started making beats, I didn't start with, like, the whole snot thing to, like... Because I was trying to make snot beats, Trey Fuego beats, all that. But, like, before that, I was doing, like, X Underground, all that type of stuff. Because, like, I was really, like... I don't know. I was really into X at the time. And I really liked 
the type of beats he was doing with very aggressive 808s and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. And I want to make beats like that. And then I found this one artist who had the same common interests as me, and his name's Lil Yoda, right? Yeah. But then, I don't know what happened, but he just decided to stop working with me. We only made, like, I think two songs together. I wanted to keep working with him, but um, I don't know. He just decided to stop working with me, so I decided to just move on and continue as, like, a solo producer by then. Well, that's dope. So, like, is he still making music, or...? I'm pretty sure. I think the last time I checked, he did a song with A14, but I don't know if that was just, like, out of the kindness of his heart or just, like, he paid him for it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, the question, the big question is, how did you and Lil Bubba go meet? Like, how did that combo come to life? Yeah, so, like, what Bubblegum said in his interview, it was kind of like, he, we met because, um, how the story happened was, was like, Dead Ox, which is one of the homies, shout out Dead Ox. Um, he pretty much he was in class and he found my beat on YouTube and he sent it to Bubblegum and they're like, yo, check this out. And it was pretty much like a beat I titled it was like I think called Heroin Father, X Not, X X X X and Tassiana. I don't know, I was naming it some weird stuff. <laughs> but um I I guess they used it. And two weeks after they had it out with a uh, bubblegum dead ox and one and only on it, bubblegum uh, DM'd me, and he was like, "Hey yo, I want to buy the uh, MP3 release for your beat and all that stuff." And when I first saw his name, I dead ass thought he was a meme rapper, so I didn't really take him that seriously. Yeah, but it's like I went through his account and everything, and I was like, "Okay, this guy has some pretty good stuff." And he had, like, a legit following and all that. So I went on his SoundCloud, right? And I saw songs like Footloose and all that stuff, right? And I honestly liked it. And I was going, I went back to him on Instagram. I was like, hey, yo, bro, we got to start working more. We got to start connecting more, you know? And then after that, I went back and I saw AF1. And that thing had, like, 100,000 views at that time. I was like, holy shit. And I went on YouTube. And I wanted to check it out as well and see if it was just a SoundCloud thing. Apparently, dude, that thing was almost at a million on YouTube. I was like, yo, dude, this is crazy, bro. But, like, the thing is, at the time, he didn't, like, really, you know, was noticed as, like, low bubblegum till early, uh, later on. Just before that, it was kind of like an underground producer slowly climbing up, you feel? So yeah. I was like, dude, I need to start working with this guy because clearly this is, like, one of the really good artists that I probably will never see again in. So I got to start working with them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, that all that happened in 2020, right? Because Footloose, that hasn't been out like a whole year. So that, did you meet him this year? Yeah, I I met him this year. It was, like, I think the last day of April. Um, I met, I, like, I pretty much, because um, I, I think I still have, like, a screenshot just for, like, nostalgic purposes. Like, I will go back at it. I'm, like, Bro, this is the man that I met. Like, damn, it's crazy. But, um, yeah, it was pretty much during this year. All this happened in 2020, which is crazy. So who introduced, like, this whole sound that you guys kind of created, like, with the violin samples and everything? Like, what, what was the first song that you guys collabed on? And what type of beat first, did you send them? So the first song we pretty much agreed to collab on well, I don't know if it was, like, fully, like, agreed on it, because, like, Bubba Gum, he saw it on my YouTube. But it was, like, a, it was like a Trey Fuego beat I did, because I was listening to uh, 90 from Trey Fuego. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, dude, this is actually fire. I gotta make a beat like this, right? And I saw not that many people were actually making violin beats, surprisingly. Like, if they were, they just had the name Trey Fuego on it, but not that many people were really making, like, Trey Fuego beats and all that. So I wanted to try to make my own version of it, you feel? Yeah. And that's just how I made Guap. I just did it for fun. I called it like Trey Fuego X Not type beat. I uploaded it to YouTube and I guess Bubblegum saw it because he was like, bro, I need to try some on this. And I was like, ayo bet. So he pretty much bought the exclusive for it. And um, he just started like, you know, putting his own twist onto it. Like, because Trey Fuego has his own style on what he did in 90. But Bubblegum added something completely different to it. I've never heard Trey, Trey Fuego, so I might need to check him out. But So Guap was the first song you guys ever made? 
Yeah, just like that. Well, before that, it was actually like high. But if you're talking about like after we start connecting and start learning more, yeah, then I guess you could say Guap is kind of the first one. That's but crazy. I I kind of still consider like yeah I kind of. I don't know. I would probably consider High to be just our first song, even though we didn't know each other at that time. I still feel like it's a really good song. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, though. Like, Guap is, like, sort of, like, the first real collaboration. That's crazy your first song did numbers like that. That's his biggest song, right? Yeah. Like, it has, I think, 8.2 million on YouTube as the time that we are like, you know, doing this interview. But it's, like, we didn't really think it was going to get 8 million. We... He thought it was just gonna get like maybe five, six thousand views, and that's it. But I think like in two, three weeks, it hit like a mil. I'm like, oh, dude, no way. That's crazy. So, what do you think? How do you think it got so big from TikTok or something? Um, uh, I think it probably just got big because I'm probably gonna say YouTube algorithm because that thing can be weird at times. Yeah. Because TikTok. I mean, Bubblegum had songs on TikTok that were doing okay. Like, I think AF1 had, like, been used 1,000 times or a little more. But I don't think it was because of TikTok. I think it was probably just because, like, natural growth and the fact that, like, YouTube randomly decided to put the song and recommend it. Because that's, like, and I can say that for sure because with me, I had this one beat on my channel, right? Mm -hmm. It was stuck at 4,000 views. And then for some reason, a month later, it goes up to 700,000. Like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to get into how do you make your beats? Like, because you produce um, E-Girl as well. So, like, in the, yeah. the, the sample on E-Girl is insane. Like, I don't want you to give away your um, how do you find these samples and everything like that. But, like, just tell me, like, do you kind of surf the Internet for samples that people have never used before and stuff like that? Um, pretty much, like, I just go on, I just go on YouTube and just search up for, like, samples that hopefully many people haven't used. I know some of my samples, people have used them, but it's, like, I try to also look for samples that people haven't used, like, Guap. I don't think anyone has used that sample, like, because I, what I did, and... I, I want to give out the sauce for it because I want to be nice. I want to be one of those producers who actually are nice about it. And plus, I think like me and Bubblegum are probably going to cut back a little bit on the whole violin genre because me and especially him are kind of tired of the violin genre. But um, we might go back to it later on. Who knows? But uh, like I just searched up the original sample. I had to f- do some research and find the original sample for Trey Fuego's song, 90. I found the original artist for it. I-, I put that name in, and I went to one of the albums. And that album had, like, the guap sample and I think a couple other violin samples in there, which is kind of crazy. It's That's like, crazy. a lot of people don't... Yeah, like, a lot of people don't know that if you go to the origi- original, like, artist's page or, like, the original artist's song... You just copy that name of the artist, right? You paste it in, and they might have other songs that are as good for sample, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, you have to get all the... Is that sample clear and everything? So, like, they don't try to take the song down in the um, future? Um, the sample is right now um, not cleared, but, like, with... Here's the thing that, like... Um, people also need to know with like artists and producers when a producer samples as soon as they get the beat sent to the artist and all that it's not their job to actually start worrying about is this song going to get taken down because it's a sample that didn't clear you know what I mean like sample clearing is mainly the artist's job or if an artist is signed it's like the record label's job you know it's never the producer's like whole thing like oh yeah the producer has to go out spend money to get the sample cleared like you know what i mean yeah i get what you're saying so yeah is like, that kind of what are you about to say oh my bad i was um i was gonna say like because if you look at the song from snot like excuse me that thing got taken down because the sample was not cleared and all that stuff 
Like, you don't see people going out and blaming Donny Katana because the sample wasn't clear, right? It was because the artist decided not to clear it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but I yeah, can understand that. Say? Um, Some artists that I know, like, they... I thought they they had to, like, get the sample clear or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of confusing with all that type of stuff. I mean, usually when the sample or, like, the song gets really huge, like, was it Lil Nas X with... Um, Old Town Road, that was actually a sample from, like, Nine Inch Nails, I think. Oh, yeah. And they used a song with an uncleared sample, right? So they had to pay to clear the sample up, and that's what they did. So, so it's, like, usually if, like, let's say the song Guap got even bigger, and it caused me and Bubblegum to become bigger and bigger, and then the person who originally made the sample sees it, we could, it's, like, you would most likely would have to pay off the clear the sample in some way i don't know how because i've never really gone into that but yeah. i do know that like you're eventually gonna have to clear the sample uh sooner or later if the song gets really big you know what yeah. I mean? so you said that you guys are gonna kind of abandon the violin sampling style for a while like are you guys abandoning that because people keep comparing mm -hmm. every song saying that this song sounds the same or blah 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 um, I don't know if we'd say completely abandon it. We'll probably just like stop it for a bit and maybe some point later on down the road, we'll probably continue to do it again. Maybe one or two extra songs. But yeah, we're kind of going to stop it right now because a lot of people are always like saying, make more songs like WAP. Like Bubblegum always tells me like there's always people telling him, make more songs like WAP. And then when he does songs kind of like WAP, this sounds too familiar to WAP, do something else. It's like... At that point, it's like you can't really please everyone, but at the same time, it's like it's the artist's decision on what they want to continue on doing. And it was clearly obvious that Bubblegum didn't want to do like the violin thing anymore. But maybe, like I said, we might do a conclusion the whole violin thing, or maybe we might do maybe one or two more violin songs later down the road. But we don't know right now. We're just like, I don't know, we're just doing other styles right now and seeing what we can do with that, and hopefully um, Bubblegum's fans like them. So you guys have uh, more songs coming out soon? Um, We got a couple songs that we're working on. I'm not really going to get into them. That's going to be like if Bubblegum wants to say what songs they are. Yeah. But um, all I, I, all I can say is that we have a couple songs on the way. We just can't say what it is right now. So what other artists are you working with other than Lil Bubblegum? Um, probably like some of the other people in World Is Yours, like one and only Cisco, you know, those people. Yeah. Like, I like, um, how one and only and Cisco also have their own like type of style to what they do. You feel like, I don't know, cause I'm trying to get a song with them and hopefully it turns out to be good. That's all I can say right now. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be dope. So, what kind of goals are, are, do you have for yourself or in the future? Like, what do you want to accomplish? And do you want to make music um, your full-time career? Um, Yeah, I want to, like, try to make music my full-time career. I know not with everyone. It works out. Eventually, at one point, it's just, like, it doesn't work out. But, I don't know. I feel like if we continue the progress that we're going in and we keep growing more and more, I'm hoping that not only me, but everyone else that I work with, like Lil Bubblegum, One and Only, Latoa, Tommy Ocean, Cisco, Shenron, Nate Goyard, everyone in World is Yours and all that. I'm hoping that we can all just make it one day and like start making music in like LA and all that. Like I know that like some people that from like the World is Yours and everything are in, like the work in LA, but that's also what I want to try to do as well. Cause I, I don't know. A lot of people are just like, yo, I want to try to work in LA, but sometimes it will work out. Sometimes it won't like, you know what I mean, it depends on like how much time and effort you really want to put into your music and you want to actually like try to grind it out and try to actually like, you know, gain a consistent fan base and start making more and more hits and all that stuff. Yeah. I think the slow, like not the slow, but like going up gradually and actually gaining organic fans is better than just like having a big song like Guap and then none of those fans stick around. Yeah. So what you guys are doing yeah, is actually like, really good. 
Yeah, because what's it called? Like, if you look at some people who, I'm, I'm going to say as an example, blew up off TikTok, um, most of those people just don't make it at that point. Like, I can't think of one, but I can't think of, there's this one artist, I forgot his name. Oh, he made that song fast, bro. I haven't heard of him ever since that song blew up on TikTok. I don't even know if he's gaining the same amount of views he was probably gaining back then. But yeah, I know some I know. somebody from TikTok. You know Baby No Money? Oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's kind of one of those type of artists. Like, when he dropped La La La, blew up, was huge, dropped the music video to it, did like 100 million quick, like in two months or three months. And yeah. Now, and now he like, that he's not keeping that stagnant um, fan base, really. It's just the core people. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just like, it's like if you're not able to, like, please your fans and you're going the opposite direction, like, doing a whole, like, 180 and saying, hey, I'm going to, instead of doing this, I'm going to try this, it will most likely not work out, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think switching up the sound too much and trying to, like, be too, I think the problem nowadays is too many artists want to be too versatile. Like, I feel like X and Juice World and the rest of the artists that kind of were doing that versatile type of stuff, it kind of yeah. ruined it for a lot of artists because a lot of artists feel like they need to sing and rap on the same album and then do this type of song and then do, like, a Spanish song. Like, it's it's kind of oversaturated. Yeah, like, if you look at uh, Snot, like, he was kind of keeping that same aesthetic vibe on like pretty much every single song but making it in a different way you know what i mean he's not like completely changing up his style completely you feel yeah. like every single song he's using the exact same voice but like it still works you know what i mean yeah. like even on like megan like that shit was like kind of like a rap type singing type thing you feel it's like it it, it seems different but at the same time it like sounds what the same from what he's doing but it, it doesn't he does it in a way to where he his fans still get pleased by it and like yo this is still fire you know what i mean like yeah. his newest album like that man completely just changed the whole style and beats that he was using you feel but it just still worked you feel because he's still trying to keep that same energy that same style onto those beats you feel yeah um i'm not the biggest snot fan like i think he's dope but i just don't really listen to him that much but what do you think about him, like, linking up with Lyrical Lemonade and everything like that? Do you think it's working out for him? Like, Oh, yeah, definitely, bro. Like, that man did two songs in a row with him. Like, yeah. you don't usually see that happen with Lyrical Lemonade. I think the last person I saw that happen with is, like, Juice World. But, like, you don't really see that happening with any other artist. So it's, like, he must be connected to, like, Snot in some way because... He's not just going to give, like, a random artist, like, two music videos in a row, you feel? It's kind of like, I don't know what connections are going on behind the scenes, but it's clearly working out for him, you feel? Yeah, I kind of feel like the industry, though, is missing us. They're, they haven't really... Cole Bennett hasn't made any stars lately, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like most of the people he's just adding on there are already, like, stars. They've already made it. Yeah. Like, it's it's kind of like he needs to add more fresh artists coming up, like yeah. Snot. Like, I mean, because I feel like Snot, from all, out of all the other artists I've been seeing, is, like, the only one that actually is, like, still not fully popped off yet, but he's, like, fresh, and he's still going to, like, grow more and more. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like if Cole Bennett kind of, like... Just take Bubblegum for an example. If he if he put Bubblegum on Lyrical Lemonade with Guap and he did the music video to Guap, I think that shit would blow up huge. On on God, bro. Like that yeah, like I said, like Cole, he just needs to get more fresh artists on there who are on the come up and are about to make it. But in this day and age, it's like unless you have connections, you can't really, you know, do a lot. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you don't know people that can edit, make music videos and all that, it's kind of hard to actually, like, keep up, you feel? Yeah. It's like you have to do it, like, slowly and gradually. Like, or I'm just going to keep uploading songs until, you know, my fan base grows more and more, and then hopefully I get noticed by someone. Yeah. Kind of sucks. So, like, back in the day, it really kind of wasn't like that. It was more as, like, if, if you have a dope video, you put it on YouTube and it blows up, then you get yeah. connections from that. Pretty much. Like, that's just how it went. Yeah. So, what's one dream collaboration, like, 
if you could produce for any artist, dead or alive, who would it be? Probably it's just gonna be Snot. Like, I fuck with his music too much, bro. It's just like, a lot of my beats now are just based off of him. And like, my friend, he introduced me to Snot, like, um, probably back in 2019 with Lawsuit and all that. And when I first heard it, I was kind of like, bro, what is this? Like, it's not that good, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, his offbeat rapping just kind of threw me off, you feel? Yeah. It's kind of like I've never heard it before. But then I think probably a couple months later, I re-listened to it. And I was like, okay, no, this is actually fire. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like if you're new to that and you've never heard it before and you listen to it like more than once, you start to get more hooked onto it. And that's what happened to me. Like 2020 came, I I started just working on, um, what's it called? I started working on more snot type style beats. Like as, as the more I start listening to him and the more I find out how people make his beats, the more I wanted to make beats exactly like Snot, you feel? So if one dream club, it, it would just be Snot because I just like his music way too much. Like every, every time I'm over with uh, someone, like a friend or whatever, mm-hmm. I would just like play Snot like all the time with him. Yeah, that's so, dope. Like, I didn't realize Snot yeah. really had such a big influence. Yeah, like if you look at my newer beats, they're just all Snot at this point. Like I went from making X808 type beats to like just starting to do like snot like i i would still i can still make like x type beats and all those other like dark distorted type of beats but i feel like i'm starting to more like slowly master the whole snot type genre type thing you know what i mean yeah and i think too it has to do with just like x isn't here anymore so his music i mean it's still he's still doing great numbers but not like what it it's not like what it was when he was alive yeah like i'm gonna be for real his mom ruined his legacy like you see all these unfinished songs and all that stuff it's like how could you listen to this like and not only that but not too long ago i i don't know who it was probably someone from his record label went on his instagram live and started promoting yeah i saw that yeah like how the fuck could you do that to someone yeah they definitely ruined his legacy like i remember just being like way younger and when x first came out he was like he was one of the most unique artists of ever yeah there's a point like, where people didn't realize we didn't even know what he looked like at one point he do he never showed yeah. his face i i pretty much learned about x pretty much as soon as he was gonna start popping off because it was like i think i i learned about him like i probably three months after his 17 album came out yeah. I, at the time i was really a fan of his whole sad stuff mainly his like dark type things but you know when you're 13 you're gonna have like these whole mood swings and shit like that so at one point i was just feeling sad for no reason and i would just listen to his like 17 album on repeat yeah i learned about him like 2015 so like when he died it was crazy that's crazy bro like it's cool to like actually talk to people who've listened to his music from when he first started yeah that's crazy i actually didn't used to like him because like I was following him back then when he was fighting and every everything like that. So, looking from the yeah. outside in before you actually knew who he was, because at that point he wasn't doing interviews or he he hadn't even done the no jumper interview yet. And I remember he yeah. went to some guy's house and you you know the video where he went in the guy's house and beat him up. Yeah, I think there was like a certain reason for it, but I don't know what it was. I think it might have. I honestly forgot what the reason was. I, he said it in the video, I yeah. think, but I kind of forgot. But it was, it was his manager. To do I think involving money. Yeah, I think it had something to do with like involving money in it. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah, well, at the time, see, I didn't know. So I was like, man, why is he just beating up on this guy for no reason? So I kind of didn't like him. But then he came yeah. out, did the interview, and, you know, the rest is history. But one of the last questions I kind of wanted to ask you was, what type of yeah. advice would you give to upcoming producers? Because I know that producers probably DM you, listen to my beat, artists, check out my music, do this and that. So if you could just yeah. tell them all, like, one thing that could help them like become a producer how you are doing what would it be so it would just be first don't send your beats and be like listen to it to producers just real quick i just want to say that but like on for real it's just like you want to be persistent all right you you just want to like keep uploading because if you look on my thing 
I was uploading like every two days, every like every single day. Sometimes I would do a double upload, but like I would always just upload consistently. I wouldn't be like, you know, uploading and then just wait two weeks and then upload again, right? If you do that, you're going to lose followers and you're going to lose interest. So the first one is just be persistent. Second one is just don't give up. It doesn't matter who's telling you what. Don't listen to what people have to say. If they don't fuck with your stuff, don't. Just don't listen to them, bro. You keep doing you, you know? You keep moving forward, and you keep, like, pumping out beats. Eventually, you will get somewhere, you know, in the underground scene, in the music scene, wherever, wherever you're trying to go, you feel? So it's just like, don't give up, you feel? Like, I, I you do not know how many times I felt like giving up. Like, literally, at the beginning of 2020, I was actually planning on, like, deleting my whole channel. It's just going back to doing just regular stuff, just going outside and just doing regular things. But then eventually, I was like, no, I want to keep pushing forward. Maybe there's a chance, you feel? Mm -hmm. And luckily, I found that chance because of low bubblegum, you feel? So it's just like, be persistent and never give up. I know that sounds kind of corny. A lot of people always just say don't give up. But, like, that's some serious advice. You just don't want to give up. Because I know so many people who tell me whether it's rapping and or just making beats... They always, like, feel like, I don't know if I should do this anymore, you know? I don't feel like it's right for me. Like, I'm telling you right now, I know not everyone who's watching this is religious or believes in God, but I do, and I want to say real quick, God has a plan for everyone, and it'll always be a good plan if you just stick through the right path. That's facts, man. I feel like everything happens for a reason, and I believe, like, I've been wanting to quit so many times as well. Like, we, I know exactly how you feel. Like, you just want to delete your channel. You just want to go back to being normal. Like, yeah, I feel that way all the time because, like, sometimes I'll get hate and stuff like that. And I'm just like, man, I wish I could just go back to being, like, normal where people don't even know what I look like. You know what I'm saying? So, I get yeah, exactly because... what you're saying. And it's so annoying when people, like, DM you, listen to my music or check out this. And it's just like... If you just work and be consistent, that being consistent is literally the the way to to get popping. If you ask me, exactly. And I I just want to say this yeah again real quick. For everyone, don't send your music or send your beats like to just people and be like, give this a listen because no one will listen to it. Okay, I know that sounds mean, but it's true. If you start sending your people your music, your beats, and be like, listen to it and give me feedback. No one's going to give a shit, all right? Yeah. And that's not, not to be mean, but it's just like you want them to notice you by telling them, hey, look, you see my numbers and you see what I'm doing. Like, you know what I mean? You don't want to be like pressuring yourself to work with a certain person, you know? And I had to learn that as well because when I was smaller, I used to make the same mistake. I used to send my beats out to artists and be like, give it a listen. Tell me what you think. But after, you know, learning from my mistake, I can – I can pretty much say, safely say just to every producer and artist, don't send your music out to people and be like, give it a listen, tell me what you think. Because most of the time, they'll either lie to you and say it's good, or they'll just not respond to you. And also, to all the artists who are watching this, stop sending me your SoundCloud links. I'm not going to listen to your songs. <laughs> but yeah. That's true, man. Like, they just got to get on the ground. Like, people don't want to work hard for anything anymore. Like, there's so many people exactly. who. Exactly. Who will DM me, can you react to my song? And they'll have like 30 followers. And I'm like, I'm not trying to be a cocky or anything, but like nobody wants to watch a reaction video when nobody has a fan base. Like, would you want to watch a reaction video of somebody who doesn't have a fan base and you just don't know who they are? Yeah, like, it's just like you want to actually like put the effort into it, right? Yeah. And I know there's also people who send me their songs that are having my beats on it. But at the same time, it's like, don't send it to me. You know, you want to actually make sure that people are seeing your music through SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever you're putting it. Don't start sending it to people. You feel? Yeah. And if, and the, also, song, yeah, if the song's good, oh, then it'll do numbers and then, then you'll see it, you know? Yeah. And also real quick, for everyone watching this, don't do follow for follow. All right. Because I know there's a lot of people who follow me who I think have a good following, but at the same time, they have a very shitty like following ratio. Like they have like... 3,000 followers and they are following like 2,000 people like that is not the way you want to go right I had so many people tell me like you should follow people for a follow back you feel you should have like you know you should just follow an entire list of like 3,000 people and 1,000 people will follow you back but it's like 
are they real followers you know because i've seen like what's it called uh prod roly right mm -hmm. um the man had thirty thousand followers but only got like 53 likes so it's kind of like you know what the what's the mistake that you're doing here you know yeah yeah for sure man like i just respect you because i feel like you got your head on your shoulders and you know what you're doing like People, yeah. people just want handouts, and it, and you seem like the type of person you actually worked hard to get to where you are. So keep killing it, man, yeah. and just keep putting in work. And I can't wait to hear Thank some you. more of your beats because I really love, I really like the violin samples. I mean, I know you guys don't, but yeah, I, I can't I wait to continue. hear what you work on. I'm, yeah, like I, I might want to continue it, but I don't know. You feel it's kind of like maybe I'll continue it, maybe not. It's like you never know, right? But it's, it's like. I don't know. I'm just so glad that the artists I work with, it's like, and Bubblegum even said it in like his interview. He's like, the main artist he works with is me and Shenron. Shout out to Shenron, by the way. Yeah. But it's crazy, bro, that it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm like an artist, like main or go-to producer, which is like something I never thought. And when I started, I never thought I would even get to a hundred subscribers. So for me to even hit a milestone like that at the time is crazy. And I know that there's people who are like, bro, how are you hitting like 1,000 subscribers like every two days? And I'm telling you, you want to be persistent, all right? Like, and you also want to make sure that you gain a following and a fan base in the correct way. You don't want to do it in the wrong way. Because I know that there's a lot of people when they do interviews and they, and you know, people like you ask them that same question. It's kind of like, you know, they don't really give out the correct response. So I, I kind of want to do that real quick for all the producers and artists who are watching and i just want to let them know that it's like anything's possible if you put your mind to it and you try hard enough you feel just grind it out you feel i can't tell you how many times the amount of people came to me and they're like bro you should just delete your channel like at school like at school so many people would literally play my beats out as like in a joking matter you feel but then one of these guys actually Someone from my school actually found the song and found out that I produced it. And they're like, bro, I can't believe you got this many followers. I was like, bro, aren't you the same guy who were like, who was like making fun of my beats? Like, like what, five months ago? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, people just love to hate, man. It comes with it. Cause trust me, yeah. there's been people who talk down on me as well. But just keep yeah. killing it, man. Like, you got Thank it. Thank you, bro. And you're so Thank young. You. Imagine where you can be at two years from now. I know people always tell me that, like, and that's, that's, like, kind of the cool thing, though. It's kind of, like, when you're, like, a very young producer, like me, and it's kind of, like, look at, you know, like, Matthias Tyner, right? The dude has, like, 70,000 subscribers, and he's, like, the same age as me, I think. And it's, like, damn, I can't believe you're that young, bro. You were young and holy shit. You, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of cool, like, when people, like, be like, dude, I can't believe you're growing that fast this young. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's really good to start young because if you start at a late, like a late age, it's kind of like, it, it's going to take longer. You feel like I'm trying and I, I'm I'm wishing that this turns out to be for the better because I don't want to go to college. I, I suck at school. I, I'm just too bad at it. Like, bro, I almost failed my, my school year in like, like freshman and sophomore i can't do another four years of school you feel yeah i couldn't i didn't i went to college two years but i couldn't i couldn't finish yeah. it. Man. it's just not for me yeah it's just it's very just like painful and like student loans and all that shit like what are you gonna major in all that stuff like already in my classes pe my teachers are already asking me what do you guys want to be when you grow up i don't want to say music producer because i feel like that's corny but it's kind of like they'd be asking you know what do you want to be when you grow up or, you know, what job you want to work and all that stuff. I'm like, I don't know at this point. It's like, it's kind of like, I don't know what I want to be, but I know one thing is for sure that outside of school, I want to be a music producer because that doesn't require any education. You don't have to go to school for that shit. You just have to be talented and that's all you need yeah. for being a music producer or an artist. Like I know that there's, you know, like I think full scale university in LA they do like um you know music programs it's like bro you don't need that shit it's like if you're a producer and you know what you're doing you don't need 
fucking school to tell you how to make music. You know, you make music that you like and you make music that you, you want to make. You don't tell you don't have a fucking school to tell you on what music you should make or what appeals to the masses. It's just like you make music that you like and that you that you make sure that you're able to get to the top of that music. You feel Mm-hmm. that's exactly like some colleges. They'll tell you. I know that somebody I knew went to a college and the class like was teaching music and they were like doing 808s and the professor was like telling not to go over the red line with the 808s or something to make it because yeah. you know what I'm saying no I feel you like yeah like for anyone who's considering just real quick if anyone watching this if you're considering to go to full scale university don't it's just like they'll literally tell you what you shouldn't do or what oh yeah you should um you know you should do like a, a like a type of like music right here with it weights very low to where you can barely hear them or shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how that works, but I can tell you right now, they'll limit your creativity. It's just like, if you're not doing school for music, like, you know, like I said, full skill university, you have endless creativity, limitless creativity. Like you can make as much as you want. No one can tell you otherwise. You feel? Facts. Being creative on your own is the best way to go about it honestly but yeah man um i appreciate you coming in for the interview this is a dope dope interview hey no problem bro i'm glad to even be on this interview bro like that's crazy like i'm i dude i'm honestly so glad i'm on this interview because i saw people like um young nugget and like low bubblegum and all that on this interview but i'm surprised that you know i'm the first producer to get on this interview which is honestly crazy yeah it's dope man your beats are dope like you deserve Thank to be you, here bro. Thank you, bro. But keep killing it, man. And uh, this has been another A We Back interview. Supreme. Hey, yes, sir. A We Back. <laughs> Appreciate you coming, man. And no problem, bro. Thank you. All right. Peace. Peace.